6 o'clock this morning, a woman is dead after crashing her car through several backyards and then hitting a house in Highlands Ranch. This happened around 2 a.m. on Rock Rockhampton Way. Douglas County Sheriff's deputies have not released the woman's age or identity. They are still trying to figure out exactly what happened. Also breaking this morning, China has filed a complaint with the World Trade Organization challenging President Donald Trump's tariff hike on steel and aluminum. China has requested 60 days of consultations with the U.S. on the dispute. If it fails, the next step could be for Beijing to request a ruling from a panel of world trade experts. So the controversy continues. Also looking ahead this morning, Mark Zuckerberg, the CEO of Facebook, will be on Capitol Hill to testify about Facebook's privacy as well as how it collects data. We're going to go live to Washington, D.C. in about 20 minutes. But here at home, let's take a live look outside right now at 601. Of course, you're watching Channel 2's Daybreak, and what a beautiful daybreak we have this morning, downtown Denver there. And Sky 2 giving us a beautiful view of the eastern plains way out there in the background as the sun starts to come up in the morning. And... Uh, anyway, good morning, everyone. I'm Ernie Bjorkman. Good morning. I'm Natalie Tisdall. Glad to have you with us. People this say morning. we look so much like spring today. We do. <laughs> We're rather bright. And that's because we've got a beautiful spring day ahead. There See, you go. We knew. Yeah. We, we called Jessica the night before, and she goes, "It's going to be spring like oh, today." Oh, you guys are bringing the sunshine in I'm your telling you, we today. are. Today, <laughs> we're going to have gorgeous weather yeah. conditions. We're talking the 70s this afternoon and plenty of sunshine. So let's get to the forecast this morning on your Bacchus and Shanker Sky Cam. We're starting off with a pink hue in the distance. Really a nice sunrise out there. Mostly clear skies over the city and temperatures down into the 30s. Not too bad. Typical for this time of year. 34 degrees downtown. 39 out towards DIA. We do have a light breeze out of the south around 15 miles an hour. Up and down the Front Range, if you live on the Northeastern Plains, Sterling, I'm tracking 30 degrees right now for you. Castle Rock sitting at 37, Boulder starting off at 45, pretty mild that direction, and 33 over in Georgetown. For the next few hours, we are going to heat up very quickly thanks to that sunshine out there today. By noon, we'll be up at 63 degrees. Our high temperature today in Denver will hit 71. Gorgeous weather conditions and a light breeze. But looking ahead for the next three days on Wednesday. High temperatures climb to 78 degrees. That will be close to the record high and we're going to pick up the winds a little bit so we're concerned about high fire danger on Thursday. We'll be right at 79 degrees. That is the record high for Thursday so it's possible we tie or break that and then on Friday we start to see some big weather changes. Temperatures cooling to the 40s with a chance for rain. Ken, I know it's still early but how are the roads looking? Well, we're dealing with a couple of issues. The freeways around town are seeing some delays up to the north. If you live in North Glen and Thornton, good news. Nobody's crashed at 84th yet. Uh, speeds there are a bit slow. <laughs> Sky 2 on the south side of the city. They're heading to problems down along Santa Fe, uh, south of C-470. They're dealing with an accident. But you can see with a wide look at town, we've got a few delays filling in along 270, a couple of backups, 84s, but no problems just yet. Uh, so our issues are down here. Uh, you are finding these delays as the southern side of Santa Fe crews are dealing with this crash, and it's essentially closed. So they're kind of rerouting you through Town Center over to Highlands Ranch Parkway to get around this issue and further to the south uh, along Highlands. Uh, 85. So look for a few delays through here. This crash has been working for about an hour. Hopefully it will be out of the way. But if it starts to jam things up, you'll start to see those effects all the way back towards C-470. Though right now, through Highlands Ranch, very few delays. The northbound side of 25 looks good coming up from Castle Rock and out of Aurora. That entire route along 225, Ernie and Natalie, so far this morning, still quiet. Thank you. Keep us updated on the traffic. An 18-year-old Ponderosa High School student is due in court this morning. She's now facing several charges for having a gun on school grounds. Margaret Goldner was arrested yesterday at the school after police received a tip that she had a weapon in her car. Jim Hooley is live at the Douglas County Courthouse this morning with more on the investigation and the charges the 18-year-old is now facing. Jim. Hey, Natalie, these are very serious charges that this young woman is facing now. We have weapons charges, drug charges as well, so it's, it's very obvious and it's very easy to see why so many parents at Ponderosa, so many students have been concerned about this. Here's the very latest on the investigation now, and here's the very latest picture that we have of this uh, young woman, the 18-year-old who was arrested yesterday. She was 18-year-old Margaret Golder, as we said. Deputies say they got a tip that Golder was possibly dealing drugs and had a gun on campus at Ponderosa yesterday. They immediately searched her car and they found the gun inside along with some drug paraphernalia. That information came to police via the Texa tip program provided by the Douglas County Sheriff's Office. Everything that's happened, I don't know, like, what would you expect? 
to happen besides being arrested immediately. Like, nobody's going to mess around with that. And it's not a joke anymore. It's not anything for attention. Like, it's serious. Deputies here in Douglas County say the Texas TIP program, in this case, worked exactly the way it should. It eliminated any harm to the student body at Ponderosa yesterday when deputies were able to act very quickly from getting that information on the possible uh, weapon inside the car and drug paraphernalia as well. Goldner coming up here due in court very shortly. She's due in court to face those charges at 8.30 this morning here in Douglas County. Live in Douglas County this morning, Jim Hooley, Channel 2 News. Jim, thank you. A suspect is in the hospital this morning after an officer-involved shooting out in Aurora. Aurora police tell us they tracked down the wanted person to this area of North Chambers and East Smith Road late last night around 8 o'clock. The suspect was wanted for, quote, serious crimes in the metro area. He was in a taxi at the time. Police tell us they tried to take him into custody. That's when the suspect was shot. Police are not saying yet if the suspect was armed. He was taken to a hospital. The cab driver wasn't injured. And we're learning more this morning about an alleged fight club at Englewood High School. The superintendent now telling parents there is no fight club, but they say they are taking steps to improve safety at the middle school as well. Some of those steps include increasing adult supervision and security during lunchtime through the end of the year. All teachers and staff will be going through nonviolent crisis intervention by the end of the week, and they will add curriculum addressing bullying and cyberbullying. Now, we first showed you this disturbing video of an Englewood Middle School student punching another in the head. The mother of the girl being hit in the video says she appreciates the steps the school district is taking, but believes the school is trying to minimize the situation. It's outrageous and it needs to stop. They need to take this more serious because somebody's gonna end up really getting hurt. Somebody is, there's gonna, you know, if they don't do nothing about it now, it's gonna escalate into something worse. Now, we have asked the superintendent for an interview. She so far has declined to speak with us on camera. Mayor Hancock has decided there will be no discipline for Chief Robert White. Despite allegations of misconduct, the chief and deputy chief were accused of failing to turn over a letter to the Denver Police Protective Association in 2016. That letter was written by then Denver District Attorney Mitch Morrissey, and it criticized the arrests of a Denver police officer and a metro area woman for an alleged sex crime. The district attorney felt it didn't happen. There were calls for discipline against the chief, saying he wasn't transparent enough. Mayor Hancock says he addressed other concerns about professionalism and better communication. More now on that shocking homicide. Two people are in jail, yet another remains on the run in connection with the murder of an Edgewater man. Right now, 19-year-olds Caleb Joseph at V Hill and Alicia Valdez are in jail for the murder of 27-year-old Andrew Genesek. Genesek was shot and killed last Thursday while just simply picking up dinner at a barbecue restaurant in Edgewater near Sloan's Lake. Police are now looking for this guy, a third suspect in the crime. He's 20-year-old Devon Howard. Police have not yet released a motive in the case, but if you know anything, please call Edgewater Police. All right, time to take a look at our traffic first this morning with an alert, Ken. Right, uh, Sky 2 out over this one, uh, Natalie and Ernie. We were talking about it. It's down along Santa Fe, south of C-470. Look at the amount of damage involved in this semi. It does look like some of the saddle tanks with all that diesel fuel in there have been ruptured, and you can kind of see that shine across the roadway. So this is all taking place south of C-470 along Highway 85 or Santa Fe. If you're familiar with this area, it is right by the split rail fence company. In fact, you can see some of the split rail off here on the bottom as far as that company goes. So what they're doing is they're actually that southern drive along Santa Fe is completely blocked. They're taking traffic towards the split rail kind of down on a side street and then back out along Santa Fe. So the alternate route will not impact the drive along Lucent or along Highlands Ranch Parkway. But again, this one is a big, big accident. I don't have details onto the injuries sustained in this crash, but when you see the amount of damage to that semi, you can bet that this one's going to be here for a while. We'll take another look and I'll bring you more details on this crash. We'll also monitor the uh, rest of the city with, with uh, another look at this drive here. Coming up, guys. All right, keep us updated on that one. Well, one of President Trump's lawyers appears to have legal issues of his own. The FBI stormed Michael Cohen's office and hotel room. Wall Street Journal reported that the raid also included Cohen's home. President Trump called the raid an attack on our country and all it stands for. Cohen's attorney says the FBI executed a series of search warrants to seize privileged communications between Cohen and his clients. A source says that the feds also seized items between President Trump and Cohen. The raid apparently stemmed partially from a referral by the Office of Special Counsel Robert Mueller, who is leading the Russia investigation. So could Mueller see a pink slip soon?
We'll see what happens, but I think it's really a sad situation when you look at what happened. And many people have said you should fire him. Uh, again, they found nothing. Cohen previously admitted to paying $130,000 to Stormy Daniels. She, of course, being the adult star, says that she and Trump had an affair in 2006 and the money was to keep her from going to the press. The White House denies the affair and Trump told reporters he was unaware of the payment. Well, President Trump tweeting about 5 o'clock Mountain Time this morning saying, quote, attorney client privilege is dead. We will update you through the broadcast if this situation escalates. Meanwhile, the Bill Cosby retrial is expected to continue today. Day one, not without its drama. Take a look inside the courtroom. The judge pressed one of the jurors about comments he reportedly made last week about Cosby's guilt. Opening statements were suspended for hours while the court investigated the matter behind closed doors. It wasn't immediately clear how the matter was resolved. But the juror, along with his peers, was sworn in around 2.30. Cosby is on trial for three counts of aggravated assault. And you got to see this. Uh, earlier in the morning when Cosby was walking to the uh -oh. courtroom, a topless woman tries to lunge at him. Nicole Rochelle jumped over a barricade and attempted to confront him. She got pushed into the bushes. Sheriff's deputies tackled her. Rochelle was detained and was charged with disorderly conduct. She wanted to make her point. Oh, boy. That's coming up on Daybreak at 611 on Channel 2. Concerns about oil and gas wells in Colorado will tell you what researchers are saying about the health of people living near those sites. But is that research valid? Six fifteen, and to a traffic alert this morning, uh, we are monitoring this horrible accident working down along uh, Highway eighty five or Santa Fe south of C four seventy. This is a, a live look from our crew on the scene to the front end of that little uh, four door sedan that was involved in this accident. Now we did get some information from police on the scene that the people involved in this crash were transported to the hospital, though we don't have any more details on to the severity of their injuries, but. The motor of that car is just sitting out down along Santa Fe. Sky 2 out, also out over the same issue. So you were looking at the front end of this car down through here as they continue to monitor it. There's parts of the car, but the motor has been completely ripped out of the frame on this accident. So both directions of Santa Fe are looking at delays. The cars that you see going through here, that's that northbound side along Santa Fe. This is the split rail fence company. So you are finding that the alternate route is right in this area. So they're just taking you off kind of down past split rail and then back on, but expect delays in both directions of Santa Fe until they clear this crash and they have not told us how long that will be. A whole lot of diesel fuel has spilled as a result of that accident. It's pretty amazing that nobody was killed in that crash. Speeds though through the rest of the city. We're kind of monitoring a good start across the majority of the highways, even along I-25 coming up from Castle Rock. A couple of delays along the Southern Drive along I-25 around 84th, but Jessica, not a bad start and a lot of people are going to be dealing with sun glare here in just a few minutes. Absolutely right, Ken. We have a lot of sunshine headed our way, and I want to start with some snowpack update. Now, we had a lot of snow move through over the weekend. Parts of the mountains got almost three feet of snow. So just an update for you all. Our average snowpack right now is 72%. Now, the peak is April 9th, so yesterday was typically the peak we see. You can just see how far below average we are right now. So from here on, it's mostly downhill. So that's the bad news. We're still very behind in terms of snow and we're going to keep it dry for the next several days. The next chance we have to see a little bit of snow in the high country will come on Friday. But for today, let's just enjoy this gorgeous sunshine out there. Blue skies over the Mile High City. Denver starting off at 34 degrees, 39 out towards DIA. And we do have a light breeze out of the south around 15 miles an hour. Statewide high temperatures will climb to 66 degrees in Lyman today. Greeley and Fort Collins into the low 70s. We'll hit 71 here in Denver. 54 in Dillon today. 55 for our friends up in Steamboat. 71 over on the western slope. Now we're going to add on a little bit of wind. And with these dry conditions we're expecting over the next two or three days, we do have very high fire danger. Red flag warning is in place for tomorrow. It will start at 11 o'clock, go until 7 o'clock in the evening with wind gusts up to 35 miles an hour and humidity values as low as 9%. So outdoor burning today, tomorrow and into Thursday is not advised, but it will be great for a car wash. We're going to be dry Tuesday through Thursday and then on Friday we bring in that storm system I was talking about, drying it back out for Saturday. So you're going to be good to go with the car wash for the next several days. 
And there's those winds. Thursday really picking up. We're talking gusts up to 45 miles an hour down here in the lower elevations. And then a big drop in temperatures with that storm system on Friday. High temperatures, 49 degrees. A 30 degree drop from what we'll see on Thursday. And then we dry it out into the weekend with highs back to the 60s for next week. Natalie and Ernie. All right, Jess, thank you very much. Well, to your health and important information for Colorado families living near oil and gas facilities, a new but controversial study has found those people may be at higher risk of cancer and other diseases. That study was led by Colorado School of Public Health. It found that people living near oil and gas facilities along Colorado's northern front range may be exposed to hazardous air pollutants, including carcinogens like benzene. Researchers found the lifetime risk of those living with the 500 feet within in 500 feet of a well was eight times higher than the EPA's upper level risk threshold. How do they limit or reduce those emissions and also show that those emissions are reduced? But this is why it's controversial. The Colorado Oil and Gas Association offered this response that reads in part, quote, the Colorado Department of Public Health and Environment recently analyzed 10,000 air samples of oil and gas operations at 500 feet or greater and concluded that there is no substantial or moderate evidence for any health effects. It also says Dr. Lisa McKenzie, lead author of the report, has participated in other inflammatory analysis that has been disavowed by state health officials. Coming up this morning on Daybreak, Mark Zuckerberg is facing a panel on Capitol Hill today as he testifies about Facebook's practices. We're going to have a live report from Washington, D.C. next. And we are tracking a big problem across the southern side of Santa Fe, south of C-470. Take a look at this accident. It was a head-on crash involving this semi. Some of the fuel tanks ruptured from this semi. You can see all of the quick dry and the kitty litter that they've sprayed in this area to uh, try to mop that up. You are looking at delays. The northbound side of Santa Fe remains open, but the southern drive getting pushed off onto the side of the frontage road, which uh, takes you by the split rail fence company. So they have a lot of work to do. There's still car parts laying in the middle. This car had its motor ripped out from the inside of the engine compartment, and it's amazing to see the amount of damage from this crash, Ernie and Natalie, and to know that nobody was killed in this accident. But the, the cleanup obviously uh, still uh, continues. There's a big, big mess. It's going to be a while. Yeah, it will yep. be. All right, keep us updated. Well, today, Facebook CEO Mark Zuckerberg on Capitol Hill answering lawmakers' questions about users' privacy. So this is the first time Zuckerberg will personally sit for questions from Congress. Kristen Holmes joins us live from the Capitol this morning. And Kristen, what can we expect today? Good morning, Natalie. Good morning, Ernie. Well, we are expecting Congress to ask two big questions. Now, they're going to grill him for hours, but the two ones uh, that we're looking at specifically is first, why are they just now letting those 87 million users know that their data had been breached when they've admitted they knew about the breach back in 2015? The second is, what, if anything, is Facebook doing to prevent this from happening again? Now, we know that Zuckerberg is prepared for the later question. They have outlined three main things that they're going to change moving forward. One is a new toolbar that shows what third-party apps you've given your information to. The second is a full audit of apps apps that they have, uh, specifically those apps that came into play before 2015. Now that was a time when they couldn't just access your data, where they didn't just access your data, they could actually access your friends' data as well uh, to see if there were any more breaches there. And the last one involves politics and this, this quote unquote fake news and what we've seen surrounding the election. What they're going to do now is they're going to label videos that are political ads or issue ads and they're going to make sure to do that before we head into midterm season this November. Let's get this question. Uh, you know, what can Congress do? I mean, they're going to ask him a lot of questions. He's going to be there for two days. What exactly can Congress do with a private company like Facebook? 
Well, that is the big question, and I've you know, heard a lot of questions around, is this going to mean regulation? But even Senator Nelson, who actually met with Mark Zuckerberg yesterday ahead of his testimony later today, said that while he'd love to yeah, see some kind of regulation on Facebook and other social media platforms, he just doesn't really think that that's going to happen right now. It just doesn't seem to be a priority. So something we're going to be watching carefully. But again, there isn't much they can do other than try to get answers and try to make sure that Facebook is working in line for their users to make sure it doesn't happen again. All right. Kristen Holmes on Capitol Hill. Thanks very much. And we'll keep checking back with you. Thanks, Kristen. Much more to come in the next half hour this morning. If you're on Medicare, well, check your mailbox today. We'll tell you why the government is sending out new Medicare cards to millions of people. And a woman is dead after an early morning crash here in Highlands Ranch. We'll have live updates from the scene coming up. is Colorado's own Channel 2 News Daybreak. And we will start you at 6.30 with breaking news in Highlands Ranch, part of Santa Fe Drive shut down right now. Sky 2 over this crash involving a big rig. Just minutes ago, you can see crews working to clean up a giant fuel spill. Yeah, let's get over to Ken Clark with this Channel 2 traffic alert this morning. Ken? Oh, it's a horrible problem down along Santa Fe. This is another look at it from Sky 2. Uh, look at how much diesel fuel and fluids from these uh, cars involved spilled. So they have a lot of cleanup to do. It was a head-on crash involving that semi and another four-door sedan that you can't see from this uh, vantage point. But uh, that car's that smaller sedan's motor was ripped out of the engine compartment uh, as a result of that accident. And believe it or not, nobody was killed. They, so the, the uh, cleanup continues. The southern drive along Santa Fe is uh, shut down. The northbound side squeezed down to just one lane. They're taking traffic off onto the side road down near the split rail fence company and then back on. You might find once Santa Fe sees more and more delays, Highlands Ranch Parkway over to Lucent will get you around this if you're coming up from Castle Rock. And you can also take that same route to avoid these delays. Uh, because right now this one is a big time problem and Ernie and Natalie, this one's been working since five o'clock. Yeah, well, we got another traffic alert. Uh, breaking news right now, a woman is dead after an early morning crash in Highlands Ranch. This is a live shot from of the scene from our Sky 2 helicopter and it's right by Highlands Ranch High School. Yeah, Crest Hill Middle School and Highlands mm -hmm. Ranch High School, a very uh, busy area of university, by the way. Her car blew through some backyard fences before finally coming to a stop. So this happened in the middle of the night on Rockhampton Way, again, off of University Boulevard. Evan Krugel is live with what we know right now. Evan. Yeah, quite an early morning wake-up call for this family as that car came crashing through their backyard and into their home here off Rockhampton Way. Now with daylight, you can see that car still resting on its side behind this home. Here's what we know so far. Police tell us that driver was going south on University when she lost control, crashing through several yards and into a house here off Rockhampton Way. This all happened just after 2 o'clock this morning. Now the family that lives here was asleep. They heard the crash and rushed outside to call 911. They say that woman drove through multiple yards, through a fence, a deck, even a tree before that car came to rest on its side, right on the back side of their home there. Now, Douglas County Sheriff deputies and fire crews have been here ever since blasting bright lights on this backyard, trying to figure out what happened throughout the early morning hours. Video from a couple of hours ago shows that car on its side, and it remains that way right now. They have still not released the woman's age or identity, and they're still trying to figure out why she left the roadway in the first place. First place, I can tell you a uh, tow truck just showed up here, so they could be starting to uh, remove that, that car here in the next few minutes. I can't tell you where it finally came to a rest. There are two bedrooms on the back side of this home right where that car stopped, so this family certainly rattled but okay this morning. As for that driver, uh, we are still waiting to hear her identity and how this crash happened in the first place. We will certainly continue to keep you updated. For now, reporting live in Highlands Ranch, Evan Krugel, Channel 2 News. All right, Evan, thank you very much. Let's take a live look outside right now. We got a lot of mess on the highways, but boy, 
I-25 right there near downtown Denver looks just fine as the sun comes up over the skyline. This is going to be, as I mentioned earlier, one of those Chamber of Commerce spring-like days. Well, let's get the details now with meteorologist Jessica LaBelle. Good morning, Jess. Good morning, you guys. A little word to the wise this morning. Grab the sunglasses before you leave yeah. the house. It is going to be a sunny day out there, and we'll have high temperatures up to the 70s. So let's get straight to the temperatures this morning that you're dealing with. 34 degrees in Fort Collins, really not bad. Fort Morgan sitting at 32. Parker, you're at 34 degrees. And up into the higher elevations, Kremling sitting at 27. Over the next few hours, we're going to see a big warm up in temperatures. Check this out, 63 degrees as we head into the noon hour. And then by this afternoon, high temperatures taking a big warm up. We'll be at 71 degrees at 4 o'clock and plenty of sunshine through the day with dry conditions. High temperatures on the southeastern plains today climbing close to 70 degrees, 69 in the Mar. We'll see 67 in Akron today. Fort Collins, 71 degrees. We will see 45 down in Aspen and 71 the high over in Grand Junction. Now, thanks to the warm temperatures, the breezy winds, fire danger is high today, although we don't have a red flag warning in place for today. That starts tomorrow because winds are going to be even stronger. This will start at 11 o'clock tomorrow, go until 7 o'clock Wednesday night, guess up to 35 miles an hour. So that's something to keep in mind. Look at these temperatures, you guys, for Wednesday and Thursday. 78 degrees on Wednesday, 79 on Thursday, really breezy winds both days. And then on Friday, a big cool down with a chance of rain that hopefully will bring some relief. Ken? Well, Jessica, it's been a pretty wild morning so far this morning. Sky 2 is out over this accident down along Santa Fe, south of C-470. All of the white is essentially kitty litter doing what they can to mop up all the diesel fuel that came out of those uh, side tanks of the semi, they can hold uh, an impressive amount of fuel. So that cleanup continues. Southern side of Santa Fe still blocked. Now the choppers, these are current live pictures coming in from Sky 2 out over that issue where the car went through the backyards and then ended up crashing in to this house. You can actually see some of the roof damage from where this car came to rest through these fences. Um, Sky 2 was pulled out wide just a moment ago. Uh, down here, this is the sidewalk along University. So there's really not much to see from University. You have floodlights into the backyard and further off through here, you've got a car kind of uh, blocking the entrance, if you want to call it that, to where it crashed through the fence and then went through these backyards and came to rest up against that house. So here's the earlier crash involving the semi. Southern side of Santa Fe still looking at a lot of delays and it still remains closed and they're taking everybody out of the way and then back on as you pass split rail. The crash along University where the car is into the house is down here along University. These are current conditions. So there's not much to see along Highlands Ranch Parkway or University in this area as you travel to work, just be mindful that at times you might find some delays associated with those problems. Up to the north, typically we would have uh, problems across 76. Today it's just delays. So speeds are may are starting to dip, but the quality of the drive, as far as accidents go, that's maintaining. Uh, so far along uh, 25 out of Castle Rock and through Aurora along that southern route, a few delays here and there already, Natalie, but all of our problems this morning are on the south side of the city. All right, no bathroom break for you. You got to stick around. You're going to be busy. <laughs> Right, also this morning, an 18-year-old student is in custody after anonymous tips said that she may be dealing drugs and had a gun in her car at Ponderosa High School. Margaret Goldner was arrested after a handgun was found in her car. She's also charged with possession of drug paraphernalia. Police say they have the text-a-tip system for just this purpose, so students can report things to school resource officers anonymously. New at 630, the federal government now taking new precautions to protect Medicare participants. New cards are in the mail to help thwart scams aimed at seniors enrolled in Medicare. The cards will have an 11-digit identification number instead of your Social Security number. Congress mandated the change by April 2019. All 59 million participants will get the new cards over the next year. We have learned the identity of the Mountain Rescue Aspen member killed in an avalanche in Maroon Bowl. 57-year-old John Galvin was a resident of Roaring Fork Valley and a 30-year veteran of the Mountain Rescue Aspen team. Sunday's avalanche also injured Galvin's skiing partner who was able to call for help and is okay now. Snow conditions were too dangerous to recover Galvin's body yesterday. Experts are providing assessments to determine the best time to do so. All right, a local connection to this story. The parents of a six-year-old boy partially paralyzed after a sudden stroke, six years old, are now suing two Kansas hospitals that they say are to blame. His family moved to Broomfield, Colorado, so he, he could receive cancer treatments at Children's Hospital Colorado. Dorian Morgan's parents say their son was initially sent home from a Wichita hospital with antibiotics for strep throat. 
but he continued to experience intense pain in the back of his head. So they took him to another hospital where he suffered a stroke and he stopped breathing. Well, it turns out he had a brain tumor. They're now suing both hospitals for negligence, claiming Dorian was never seen by an actual doctor, never went, underwent any tests, and thus was never properly diagnosed. I don't work in an ER, I don't know how it works. So to me, the people that were seeing him should have been qualified to, you know, get him where he needed to be, to be referred to somebody that needed to see him as a parent knowing that something that is going to affect the rest of the years could have been prevented. That's a lot of anger. Doctors fear Dorian may not ever be able to walk again. However, the good news, he is cancer free. An odd protest at a feed store in Wheat Ridge. Protesters claim a rabbit was being abused at the Walker's Quality Cage and Feed Store. The owner of the store has now removed the rabbit from the store and has filed a complaint with the Wheat Ridge Police Department saying she is being harassed. Lauren Tran started a campaign to have the rabbit named Zap removed from Walker's store. She led the protest this past weekend. Tran, who owns rabbits, claimed that the rabbit was not being cared for properly in its wire cage. The owner of the store, Shirley Walker, is empathetically denying those claims. I call it harassment. You are lying, lying about me. It's not even a fib, it's not even a, well, it's my opinion. No, it's a lie. She is saying we are abusing rabbits. My rabbits run up to my bed and kiss me. And this, I think it is abuse and neglect uh, to keep a rabbit in there and uh, overnight all by himself. Is emphatically denying those charges once again. <laughs> Walker says that she has raised rabbits for more than 30 years. She says she abides by the American Rabbit Breeders Association recommendations. Even though the rabbit's been removed from the store, Tran is still planning another protest this weekend. All right, the rabbit controversy continues. This morning, we're hearing for the first time from a Canadian hockey player who was on that team chartered bus when it was hit by a tractor trailer. The junior hockey team was en route to a playoff game on Friday when that crash happened. 15 people were killed, including coaches, a radio announcer, as well as the bus driver. One of the players on board said the crash came out of nowhere. We're just joking around, a couple of the guys. Uh, and then uh, all of a sudden we just like slammed on the brakes and that's pretty much the last thing I remember is just uh, seeing a couple guys stand up to see uh, what was going on and then and then I'm not sure what happened after that. Well, last report this morning, 12 people were still in the hospital after that devastating crash. Caught on camera, a scary scene in China. Two passing cars were hit by rocks falling off a mountain in southwest China. A car camera caught the moment when the rocks fell onto the vehicles. No deaths were reported. Well, how about this? An SUV slams right into a convenience store. It happened in Massachusetts. One man was seriously hurt. As you can see, the Toyota Highlander missed a woman standing at the counter by just inches. The store's manager says the man who was hit by the SUV is a regular and was gassing up his taxi before the crash. The driver was arrested and charged with DUI. Is that woman lucky? Well, don't forget to support The Shield, Colorado's own Channel 2 and Fox 31, partnering with the Safeway Foundation to help you donate to local organizations, Shield 616, and cops to support our law enforcement officers. You can donate one, three, five dollars even more when you check out at Safeway through May 6th, and again, we raise money to help them buy better protective gear to keep them safe. So many people contributing. Protecting us, oh, yeah, right. exactly. So it's a nice chance for you when you check out at Safeway just to make a little donation. Yep, all right, lots to come this morning on Channel 2. It might look like a big uh, tube-like thing <laughs> when we see it at the bank, but it could be the future of transportation. <laughs> we'll tell you the latest information on Elon Musk's <laughs> Hyperloop invention. <laughs> Breaking news happening overnight. We want to start with this situation in Highlands Ranch. This is off of University Boulevard. It's near Crest Hill Middle School and Highlands Ranch High School. A car went right off of University, plowed through a fence, through three yards before hitting this house. As you see right now, the driver of this car died in this accident. It happened at about two in the morning. Uh, there are police there on scene, and we'll update you on this situation as soon as we get more information this morning. Sad story there. And we have another mess along Santa Fe Drive that's south of C-470, a semi 
meets up with a car, not a good situation, and it spills a lot of fuel on the ground, as you can see there from Sky 2. They're trying to mop up that fuel spill, but as you can imagine, traffic is simply a mess along Santa Fe. And Ken Clark joins us now to tell us where exactly this is. Well, you know, both of these problems are on the south side of the city. This is a live look from our crew that's down on the scene of that Santa Fe crash. Uh, this is uh, one car that was involved. The SUV is behind this. Uh, so the southern side of Santa Fe still looking at a closure. Occasionally, you'll see some northbound traffic like this car uh, coming towards me. That's that northbound side. But the investigation investigation continues. Nobody was killed in this accident. The motor out of the sedan ripped out uh, from just the sheer force of the crash and the semi involved off there in the distance. So Santa Fe is looking at problems associated with this accident in both directions. This is Highlands Ranch uh, Parkway. So those delays are along Santa Fe south of C-470. The crash where the car went through the backyards of those homes is along the Highlands Ranch Parkway loop, and that car sits in through here. Not much to see along Highlands Ranch. There's a couple of police cars and some floodlights because of when this accident occurred, but the drive in this area is essentially just sealing just with its typical morning delays. So a lot of the problems are on the south side of the city. We are now starting to get issues across I-70, 6th Avenue, also dealing with an accident in those eastbound lanes uh, near Santa Fe. This is a live look at that I-70 drive. That crash was in those eastern lanes at Pecos. They have moved it out of the way, but you are looking at some backups towards federal as a result. It might make it all the way back to Wadsworth. So it has been anything but an easy drive. Speeds along 225 out of Aurora and the northbound side coming up from Castle Rock are still slow in some areas. We'll drill down on those southern delays across 25 from North Glen and Thornton. But Jessica, what, a, what an interesting day that we have on tap. A lot of motorcycle riders are going to be using today to, to get everything out. That is absolutely right, Ken. A lot of motorcyclists out on the roads today, so be cautious of that, and it'd be a great day to take out the convertible. We're talking dry conditions and highs in the 70s this afternoon. We're sitting at 34 degrees in Denver right now, 36 down in Centennial. If you're waking up in Arvada, good morning. You're at 40 degrees, and by this afternoon, you climb to 71 degrees. Over towards Ken Carroll, we'll climb to 70 degrees. Stapleton making it to 73. It's going to be a warm one, and if you're heading to Coors Field tonight, perfect baseball weather. First pitch is at 640. They're playing the Padres. By the seventh inning stretch, right around 62 degrees. And by that last out, dropping into the 50s, so a light jacket will just be perfect for tonight's games. And yes, we are going to keep it partly cloudy through the afternoon, but if you think today is warm, look at tomorrow and Thursday. Tomorrow, we do have a shot to get close to that record high of 80 degrees set back in 1982. And on Thursday, the forecasted high is 79 degrees, and the record also 79. So we will absolutely Absolutely tie or break that as we head towards Thursday. Now, not only do we have mild temperatures heading our way the next two days, but we have extremely high fire danger. We are going to be dealing with a red flag warning tomorrow from 11 o'clock to 7 o'clock with gusts up to 35 miles an hour and humidity values as low as 9%. Outdoor burning is not advised. We keep the mild temperatures Wednesday and Thursday. It is going to be very windy on Thursday with gusts up to 45 miles an hour down here in Denver. Now, that's all ahead of our next storm system that moves in on Friday. Friday. This will bring the mountains a few inches of snowfall, drop temperatures nearly 30 degrees. And you guys, with all this high fire danger, it'll be good to see a little bit of moisture around here. Yeah, well, for one day. <laughs> <laughs> we want the sunshine. Yes. Well, what to watch? Cincinnati loves its hippo, as does our producer Savannah. This yeah, she's summer. kind of obsessed she with is. Fiona. It's kind of scary. <laughs> Fiona will become larger than life when she gets her own mural on a downtown oh building. The Cincinnati Zoo teamed up with the nonprofit to get young artists' work out into the community. But before her likeness can be painted on the rover, the Rhine yes, Veterinary Hospital, ideas are needed. <laughs> artists can submit their designs for public consideration until May 7th. We've watched Fiona grow up, and she, look at that. <laughs> <laughs> she just sinks right to the bottom. I swim much like Fiona. <laughs> I did, too. <laughs> look at Savannah's that. Savannah's not the only one obsessed with Fiona. She they has her own Facebook Aww, page. She has a huge so following. She has her own book, <laughs> children's oh, wow. book. Cute as a... Cute as a button. Yeah, bigger than a button. <laughs> yeah, bigger than a button. <laughs> well, Tommy Hilfiger recently launched a whole new clothing line called Tommy Adaptive in an effort to be more inclusive of children and adults with disabilities. Nice. <laughs> Their effort started two years ago, and the venture was so successful that the fashion company wanted to offer even more options. The line offers now modifications of typical clothing items with magnetic buttons, 
Velcro, and even adjustable hems. All items are now available to purchase online. Isn't that nice to see? Yeah, I met Tommy uh, years ago. He was at a steakhouse, and his, he has family who lives here, so he visits. Oh, very cool. He visits Denver a lot. So uh, get him in here. That's a yeah, fun fact. Yeah, we should. He, he was awesome. a very nice gentleman. Mm -hmm. Well, tech billionaire Elon Musk has high hopes for an upcoming high-speed test of his company's Hyperloop transportation pod. The Tesla and SpaceX CEO says the goal during the test is to reach half the speed of sound, Oof. roughly 381 miles per hour. They'll also aim to have the pod come to a stop within three quarters of a mile. Yeah, hopefully, they uh -huh. aim for that? They're yeah. aiming for the stop. That's a long stop, three quarters of a mile. M Musk <clears throat> hopes to build a tunnel uh, capable of transporting pods of travelers between cities at speeds of up to 700 miles yeah, we, an hour. Yeah, we've been reporting on this, and they said if it goes from Denver to Vail, it'll take about seven minutes. Yeah. Unbelievable. Be and they hope that it stops. They uh -huh. hope that it That's stops. That's a good hope to have. Hey, listen, uh, good morning, everybody. Good morning. I'm a little upset. I'm a little perturbed because Why? I like to coordinate with oh, my anchors. Did you get the memo last and night? And nobody told me it's Yellow Tuesday Not here on the show. Sorry. But... I always have a backup outfit so I can better coordinate. <laughs> and so, Where all right, it? let's do this. Uh, Come on, everybody, let's go. <laughs> it's Yellow Tuesday. Come here. There you go. Uh, Come on now. Everybody. We all live in a yellow submarine. Yeah. Yellow. <laughs> so glad you have a backup outfit. <laughs> Not sure where you got that dress, but I love it, Natalie. I do, too. I yep. love it. No it's matter been, what they say about Big Bird. Many things today, from banana to Big Bird, too. No. Oh, Sunshine. banana! I Someone hadn't thought about Colorado banana. Sunshine. Banana, banana, fofana. Me, my, mo, mana, Natalie. I feel like I'm in second grade. Yeah. No, you look You look. <laughs> we are not going to tease you about that dress all morning no, long. No, she looks beautiful, right. and it's springtime, and so all express right. yourself. Hey, listen, here's a story that Ernie, and I'm please, Ernie, let me tell the story. Okay. He watches... Game shows every night before he goes to bed at 6:30. He watches uh, Wheel of Fortune, and there was a major controversy on Wheel of Fortune. Did this guy simply mispronounce the answer to the puzzle, or did he get it wrong? D. Let's put it up there, Vanna. All right, carefully. What's up there? Flamingo dance lessons. <laughs> Sorry. All right. Now, the, uh, Pat goes on to explain here. Look, we heard you say flamingo, not, not flamingo. flamingo. The gal who then guesses it correct is a gal from Colorado. Mm -hmm. But you can see the bald guy is not happy. Mm -hmm. No, he's going to go postal on Pat here. Well, maybe he has a you know a little speech impediment and is uh, flamingo. Oh. Like if I say flamingo dancing, does that sound like flamingo? Mm -hmm. Flamingo. 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 You gotta say flamingo. The, you gotta say the case. You say flamingo. I say flamingo. But, but she's from Aurora, and yes. she won a trip to Spain yeah. after she, she pronounced ru flamenco right. That ain't right. It's gonna be tough for the bald guy. <laughs> Later in the morning, we're talking about another couple from right here in Colorado who is on Wheel of Fortune as well. well yeah, they're gonna be here in our studio. Are they really? Oh, yeah. yeah. We're gonna talk to uh -huh. them about we're gonna nice show. With them. Hope they're wearing yellow. Did they get the memo? Ooh, we quick. better, we better call them. Anyway. Hey, how about this? <laughs> a rock and roll band with a long history of... <laughs> Visit gate1travel.com. <laughs> what? The heck is going We're on? We're still watching Wheel of Fortune. <laughs> the guys in the back are still watching Wheel of Fortune. <laughs> yeah. They guys, see. come on. I am more entertaining than Pat Sajak. <laughs> <laughs> All right, fine. The drama of the band that I was talking yes. about is, uh, well, a band I'm sure you know well. Mm-hmm. Fleetwood Mac lead guitarist Lindsey Buckingham gone after a disagreement over the band's upcoming tour. He also left the band back in the 1980s, so no big surprise there. Now, I have a dumb question to ask. Does, does Stevie Nicks still tour with them, or is she out too? No, she's still touring. She's with been with them? Yeah. A lot of in and outs lately. Well, one thing's for sure. When it comes to Jersey Shore fans... We got one gal oh who loves Jersey Shore. Look at that hair. Do you know who that is? <laughs> yes, oh, Jessica LaBelle. That is oh, Jessica yes. LaBelle, our own meteorologist. Back in the day, in college, they used to have... How long uh, ago? Jersey Shore parties. Oh, God. Don't make her tell her age, Ernie. Years and years ago. Years, years and years, and years. And years. Bottom line, in college, <laughs> Jessica would have Jersey Shore parties. She is so excited because later on this morning, guess who's joining us on the program? 
Snooki! We'll be talking okay. to Snooki and the cast as they prepare to come back a for comeback, their reunion. Huh? Yep. Another right. reunion show. All right, we're live and local at 7 o'clock, and Drew Engelbart has a great little story. I do. I'm not wearing yellow, it's but yellow. I have a great story to talk about. Parente's really excited about this I am. one, too. I am a too. brand new music venue. And you guys, it's from the guys that brought the Eagles, the Doobie Brothers here, Ooh. the Fillmore. So they know the industry. They brought great venues here in the past, and they're really excited about this one. I'll tell you when and where it's going to be coming up.